Today we're breaking down three online marketing mistakes that cost my companies millions. We are diving deep into three online marketing mistakes that cost my companies millions. This is the information that I wish someone would have shared with me over a decade ago. Back in 2008 when I started my business, I wish someone would have grabbed me by the shoulders and shook the crap out of me and said, Vince, do not make these mistakes. And had that happened, I'd probably have a lot more Two Comic Club awards on my wall. Now, before we dive into this content, really quickly, we're going to jump over to my Facebook page and I want to share with you the results of a case study that I had and that I did last week. Um, I basically send out an email and I posted some information on social media, simply asking asking you, the viewers of my content, which content you liked the best, uh, because again, I make this for you. Um, I want to make sure that you get uh, value and that I help you reach your end goals. So let's jump over to uh, Facebook and let's check out the results from this case study, and then we'll get back to the content of the day. All right, so as you can see, I'm on my Facebook page, and if you're not following me on Facebook, you can do so by going to facebook.com forward slash Vince Reed Live. So every single Saturday, I release new content like you're watching right now. And for me, it's really about giving back and making sure that I produce content that actually moves the needle and helps you be a better entrepreneur. I pride myself on not producing fluff. I want you to be able to watch this information and go out and actually execute. So the post and the purpose of this post last week and last week's content was to really get an idea of what you like. And for me, it was interesting because a lot of times the content that we think that is going to you know, be the most popular content content isn't the most popular at all. So I'll give you an example. I basically ask people to just comment the number of the content that they like the best. And as you can see here, um, I say, here's the kind of content that I typically release. And it says, number one, internet marketing life, a behind the scenes look into my business. And then I put the link there. So for example, for those of you who want to see behind the scenes, you can definitely check out those internet marketing life um, videos those are on my YouTube channel as well. Then I put uh, live whiteboard training. This is a deeper insight on topics. And this is where I'm just basically standing there in front of a whiteboard, breaking down notes, sharing strategies, helping you with your business. And then number three, walks around my neighborhood, a more laid back approach to content. And I put a link to some of those training. And those are really cool. I just kind of just go outside my home, walk around the neighborhood and share some topics. And then number four, PowerPoint presentations, more of a classroom style approach and feel. And that's actually what you're watching right now. So if you go through the comments, you'll notice here, if I open up all the comments, um, you know, the ones that were the most popular weren't what I thought. I thought for sure people were going to love like the internet marketing lives, which are highly produced. And, you know, we kind of put a lot of energy into those. And, you know, those got very little votes. I mean, that was number one. And you'll see there was very little number ones. But as we go down here, uh, you'll see number two and four, number two, number two, uh, number four, number one and four. There was one internet marketing life there. Thanks, Leon. Uh, number two, um, as we keep going, this person, uh, Martin, liked everything. Uh, two and four, uh, four, two, two and four, one and four. Uh, my man Shaka liked the Internet Marketing Lives. Uh, there's a three. We don't have, we haven't seen a very many threes. Uh, number two, and uh, oh, they said like number two the best. Uh, number one and three, there's another I Am Life. Uh, two and four, two, two, and two and four. There was a three right there, um, two and four, four, two and four. So anyways, let's go up and see. You can see the standard is pretty much two and four. So live whiteboard trainings and PowerPoint presentations like you're watching right now, which is really interesting. And the reason I wanted to share this with you is a lot of people are not doing content. They're not releasing videos because they feel like they need this amazing production. Like right now, I'm literally sitting in front of my computer screen and I'm showing my screen. Every single one of you can do that. And that got the most views. And you're talking to a person that's you know, right around 100,000 followers here on um, Facebook. And, um, you know, you know, several thousand subscribers on YouTube and Instagram. And that means there's a lot of people that get to vote here and the people spoke. And that's why you do this. And again, I want you to know that you can make this happen. OK, don't let, you know, what you think people want to see prevent you from actually reaching your goal. All right. So why am I doing this particular type of video? The PowerPoint presentation number four, because the people have spoke. So what are you going to see more of from me? board trainings and PowerPoint presentations. All right, sharing with you guys concepts and strategies. All right, so this is kind of just a bonus tip for you guys to see um, you know, firsthand what you need to do. And this is proof that you can build a successful channel. You can put out content as long as it's things that people want to actually see. All right, so let's jump over to uh, this week's content and let's go to work.
All right, welcome back. So as I said, we're going to be diving into three online marketing mistakes that cost my companies millions. All right. So number one, all right, number one, one of the big mistakes that I made and, you know, I probably will make again in the future because it just happens as entrepreneurs, we are very creative beings, is having too many promotional offers. All right. You know, a lot of times people teach you, especially today, we live in the world of sales funnels and, you know, making offers and upsells, down sales, triple lending sales, left, right sales. And people are always talking about multiple income streams and this and that. And, you know, I have to be quite honest with you. I think that having multiple offers and having too many promotional offers actually can hurt you. And you fall victim to what I'm calling the pit syndrome. Okay. The P-I-I-T syndrome. And we're going to break that down. You know, I truly believe that you really only need to focus on one core offer, all right? And especially when you're getting started, that doesn't mean that you can't have other offers. But in the meantime, you really are what you focus on. Let's dive into this. So what is the pit syndrome? Okay, number one, the first P is product confusion. Okay, when you have a lot of things that you're promoting, okay, often what you end up doing is confusing your audience, all right? Because we've talked a lot over the last few weeks about being consistent and being able to produce content and, you know, being able to out consistent your competitors. When you're offering a lot of different things, okay, you create product confusion and your audience really can't identify what it is that you sell, which leads me to identity confusion. Because sometimes when you're doing different things, so for example, let's say you're doing affiliate marketing, you're creating your own products, you're, you know, you're blogging, you're, um, you know, you know, I don't know, selling e-commerce products, and you're doing all these different things, and you're promoting that, and you're talking about it to your to your audience, and your audience gets confused of what they should buy, then then they get confused of your identity, and that's one of the main reasons why I made a decision years ago to say, hey, you know, I'm gonna make sure that I basically, you know, own the internet traffic keyword. Internet traffic and leads is my book. Internet traffic factory is my company. Set up my ads is my agency. You know, it's very clear that, you know, what I'm here to do is to help you get more traffic and leads for your business. All right. So when you can really identify and pinpoint what it is that you want to do, you can be extremely successful. You know, the, the multiple income streams, that, that's a great concept. And to be quite honest with you, often it's really almost a myth. I mean, there are people that are making multiple income streams, but they're, they're rare. The people that make a lot of money, I'm talking even the billionaires out there, they're focused in on their company, okay, making that company profitable. Now, granted, those companies may have multiple products which drive revenue stream, but at the end of the day, they have a focus of one thing. So you really don't want to have identity confusion. Now, income confusion is another thing. Now, for example, so some people, they get this thing in their head they're like I want to build this like residual income business this membership site right and then they get fixated on that and they're constantly experiencing churn so they get like four or five members and then five or six people quit and it feels good because every month you're constantly seeing new money coming in but you're kind of steady at where you currently are whereas if you would just focus in on let's say maybe selling one product that's a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars and you put all your energy into that you would dwarf the type of revenue that you would make from this, you know, revenue that's that you have in your mind that you have to earn, which is this recurring income. So I'm not saying recurring income is bad. Okay, you got to understand you have to take everything I say with a grain of salt, meaning, you know, again, nothing's ever as good as it sounds. Nothing's ever as bad as it sounds. So, you know, for me, I'm just saying when you're earning income, sometimes you focus on the thing that gives you a quick fix versus looking at it from a realistic perspective and saying, hey, if I put the same amount of energy over here into this one thing, I'd make way more money. And this little couple grand that I'm making from this residual income business that I'm focused on isn't really worth my energy and my time. All right. And that's what I call income confusion, because you're, you're basically almost like a slave to like a certain revenue stream because you don't want to cut it off because you think you need it. But had you put that same energy into something else, you would absolutely crush it. And then I have to say time confusion. Okay. The T is in the pit syndrome is time. All right. So, you know, you, you have to focus in on, on the thing that you want to grow and your time is something that you can't get back. And everybody has 24 hours in a day and, you know, every single second you spend on something else, especially as we kind of go back up to income confusion, when you're focusing in on that other product that's making you maybe some consistent money and something else that's not making you any money at the time but could be the thing that makes you the most money you aren't focusing on and that's taking the time away from the thing that you need to be focused on so i encourage you to really figure out you know one offer and and make that offer 100 percent irresistible and and uh you know you would absolutely dominate which leads me to number two okay not focusing on your customers objections and results 
Okay, and these are mistakes that I made. Okay, I'm telling you, when I got started, I had so many things that I was offering, and it, it just sucked all of my time, and I didn't make any money, and I definitely was not focusing in on my customers' objections and their results. So what do I mean by that? Every time you have a product or service, okay, the way you make money is you have to solve a problem, period. Okay, the harder, the more difficult the problem, the more money you make. Now, everything, everything that you sell, there's going to be objections to it, including me. I mean, people can watch me and they go, why should I listen to you? You know, you know, I don't know. There's all kinds of things that you probably think. I don't want to get into that at this point. But my point is every product has an objection. Somebody is thinking something about it that you have to overcome. And once you get into focusing in on the objections and making sure that you can answer those objections clearly and in an honest way, you'll win. And when you can focus in on the results of your clients, you'll absolutely dominate. So let's dive deeper. Okay, when it comes to objections, the goal is to answer them before your customer brings them to you. So, you know, one of the things that I remember, you know, learning um, actually from my dad years ago in sales was he would call it landmine selling. And, that, and landmine selling is basically sharing something that is good or bad before the client actually brings it to you. So, for example, especially if you're dealing with a situation where um, you know that your customer is going to go shop you or they're going to go compare what you have to someone else. So if you know your customer better, if you know your customer and your competitor is better than they know themselves, you can do what's called landmine selling. So you can say something that another person is going to say to them and basically that's not maybe not necessarily the best thing or the most truthful thing to say and then when that other competitor says that to them they're going to say that they did exactly what you said i now trust you all right so the only way to do it is to overcome the objections before they actually bring them up to you whereas a lot of people try to like avoid them and they try to basically put it under the carpet and not talk about the things that aren't really warm and fuzzy they want everything to be warm and fuzzy so let me give you an example so my, my agency uh, set up my ads. Uh, it, it's a done with you agency. So we help businesses get customers. And we also have a partner program where we basically train people to start their own digital agencies and they get to basically license our, our system and go out there and target businesses and they help those businesses get customers and we do all the work and we work with the business and all that stuff. So anyways, when we're helping a a person that wants to start their digital agency and they decide to partner with us they've got a, a lot of objections they're like well why should i partner with you and how do we know that you're cut that you're going to do the best for our clients that we bring you and how do we get paid and blah 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 blah. they're asking all these questions i have to go somewhere write all those things down on the on a whiteboard and when i'm presenting my presentation i bring them up before they even can ask me the question and the second you can present a presentation where every one of those objections are answered and they don't have to be the best answer. They don't have to be warm and fuzzy. Okay, they don't even have to be what the person wants to hear all the time. It's just the fact of the matter is that you answered it. Okay, you will start to generate more sales because you'll overcome the objections. Most people avoid them. I'll give you an example. For example, like if you go to like a network marketing event and, and then someone comes and they go, is this network marketing? A lot of people will say, no, 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 it's not network marketing. It's something else. But it is network marketing. Why can't you just say, yes, it's network marketing? And I know it's had a bad rap in the past, but the way we actually do it is different. And just address it. You know what I mean? And I think that's what I'm trying to say. Like when it comes to objections, just be truthful, be honest, and don't you don't have to be warm and fuzzy. Just tell the truth, but but say them before the person actually brings them to you and you'll generate a lot more sales. Now when it comes to results, here is the key. This is really the really the cream of the crop. This is the holy grail of sales, it's results. And a lot of times, you know, people focus on generating the sale and then they think that everything is over once the sale is made. You see, the cool thing about marketing is that results can't be duplicated. Like people will try to copy the way I do the video or they'll try to go do certain types of things that I might do in marketing. And that's fine. I think entrepreneurs should mirror the best marketers in the world. They shouldn't copy, but they should mirror. I'm all for that. But one thing that no one can copy is results. You know, I've been in the game for over a decade, okay, consistently getting better, growing companies each and every year. Those are things that can't be result can't be duplicated. But the key is that my students get results and my clients get res get get results because that's a focus of mine. So when the when the product is sold, okay, I actually continue selling, meaning I continue to work with anybody that's bought my product and make sure that I'm there for them, you know, above and beyond anyone else. And I think that when you do that and you can get results, and if you go back and you watch a, a training I actually put out a few weeks ago, maybe actually maybe like a couple months ago, and you look at uh, my income maximizer formula, 
one of the pieces to actually getting to build a business that generates seven figures or more um, within three in three years or less is being able to get testimonials and get results, which I think that has to be a major focus of your business. If you aren't getting results, if you're just making money and nobody else is making money and no one else is getting results, chances are you're not going to be very successful or very successful very long. All right, so results are the holy grail because they can't be duplicated. All right, so if you're getting value so far, do me a huge favor and comment below. I always show this, I try to show this particular slide when I do these presentations. As you can see here, value, the regard that something is held to deserve the importance, worth, or usefulness of something. And my goal is that when you get on these trainings and you watch these videos, that you're getting 100 times uh, the value in terms of the time spent because I know everybody's time is valuable. So if you're getting value, do me a favor and like this video and also comment and let me know what you think. And the reason I want you like it is because if you do and you're getting value it lets me know to produce more content like this all right so let's keep it moving number three okay big big mistake that I made I didn't master the science of profitability now I went deep on this topic in one of my new programs where I'm helping my partners get results and I shared with them um, I created this program and this training um, called the foundation of an empire which really is just you know, it's, I think it's one of my, my best work. But anyway, I took this little piece from that training because I thought it was that important. You know, when I got started online, I didn't understand and master the science of profitability. And most people don't. They usually jump the gun and they wreck the momentum. You know, build, life, business, everything is a snowball. And it can work for you or against you. So, for example, you get in the habit of eating bad. You're not going to see anything happen to you probably in the first week or two or even the first month. But guess what? That what you did in that week and that first month, you feel the effect of that six months from now. It's a, it's a snowball. And vice versa. You eat healthy. You start now, even though you don't think it's having an effect on you. It has a snowball effect. Same thing with your business. Same thing with marketing. Same thing when you invest in yourself. Okay, it starts off and you're like, man, I'm wasting money. I'm not doing anything. And people usually wreck their momentum before they even give it a chance to grow. Remember, you've been building habits, whether good or bad, for, I don't know, X number of years, however long you've been doing it. And those habits are either good or bad. You think you're just going to change those habits overnight because all of a sudden now you're an entrepreneur. Okay, that's not going to happen. Look at the successful people and, and, and you know, you'll notice that all of them are like 10, 20, 15 year success overnight stories, right? You just found them and you think they just got rich that day and they've been grinding it out for more, many years. Like, same thing for me. I've been doing this for over a decade. All right, so you have to master the science of profitability and realize that it's going to take time. It may take you a year, but guess what? If it takes you a year, that's much better than waiting until you're, you know, old and gray and, you know, in your retirement years to um, obviously live your, the rest of your life. All right. So you got to master the science of profitability. Now, here's how you do it. You have to make decisions based on data and not what you think. OK, you have to, decisions have to be made based on data and not what you think. So there are so many times where I look at people's advertising campaigns and they have cut off, stopped or changed profitable ads because one day the ads were giving them leads at $3 and the next day it went to $7 and in their head that's a bad leads bad they got to stop it every time you do that you're messing up your ads all right you have to make decisions based on data including myself when I got started I actually went back and did a test and looked at ads that I stopped years ago that because they you know the price maybe doubled or tripled but it still was profitable it's about ROI guys you got to focus in on ROI you can't make decisions based on things that aren't data driven and uh, for me, my number is 100. So well, how do you know where the data is when I get to 100? So for example, if I'm generating leads and let's say I have a 10% conversion rate on my like sales video, I don't, draw, I don't base it off of 10 leads and say, oh, I've got 10 leads and one person didn't buy, so it's not at 10%. I always try to get to 100 and then I make my assessment because I think that 100 is a good number. It's enough data to really make a good decision. All right, so you know, I've seen people cut things off because they'll say, I got 60 or 70 leads and no one bought. Well, what, do you, what would have happened if you would have got to like lead 80? Maybe the next nine in a row would have bought and you still would have been at your 10% you know, closing number. All right, so my point is let data be your driving force to making decisions. And last but not least, I want to basically dig this home for you guys. And I want you to realize that success is not always what you see. All right, success is not always what you see. In fact, guys, I've been, I've been privileged to do 
you know, run ads for some very successful entrepreneurs and consult with some individuals who, trust me, you know, and some of them are doing better than what you think they're doing. And some of them are struggling and doing way worse than what you think they're doing. If you really looked behind the scenes and looked at what's actually happening with the books, but they're smart enough to still reach out for help. And I'm not saying that to knock any of those individuals. My point is to share with you that success is not always what you see. As you can see this picture, you got the carrot. Look at that, man. That thing's growing. It's, 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 it's uh, healthy down there, but you look at the other one up there where it's leaves and everybody can see everything happening, but nothing's happening below the surface. Okay, what you want is to not focus on what everybody else is thinking. If it means that you've got to go away in a back cave for the next three months and build something positive and grow your business and nobody knows what the heck you're doing, and then you come out and nobody hears from you from three years, but behind the scenes you found a strong niche, you started dominating, you started making money, and you were able to support yourself and your family, that's what it's all about. Okay, it's not about what everybody else thinks because here's the deal most people aren't thinking about you most people aren't waking up thinking about Vince Reed and what he's doing they're thinking about their own lives okay so you need to do the same thing for your life and your family okay do what's best for you build your business provide value use some of the strategies that I share with you and don't make those same mistakes because you know again if you don't make them and you start focusing in on the things I just shared with you you'll have a lot more two comic clubs on your wall than I do all right so hope you guys got a ton of value let's recap what we learned we talked about having too many promotional offers we don't want to do that we want to focus on just one we talked about not focusing on customers objections and results that was a mistake that I made we want to focus on our customers objections we want to make sure that they get results and we want to make sure that we answer to the objections before they even come to us with them. Okay, number three, one of the mistakes I made, not mastering the science of profitability. Okay, this was a massive problem that I had, turning off campaigns, not focusing on ROI, making decisions that weren't based on data. You don't want to do that. All right, so with that being said, be sure to comment and to share your thoughts below. Okay, again, I really, really, I love to see that. And, and on YouTube specifically, it will be me that actually um, replies back to you. I truly appreciate it. I love giving value and sharing these videos with you. Um, you know, it's a pleasure every single week to be able to help you guys because I know when I got started, I never forget where I came from. I just wanted to get real actionable steps and, you know, things that could really help me move the needle. And I hope that you get that from this channel. So, again, I appreciate every like and every comment. And I look forward to working with you guys in the future. And with that said, for those of you who want more customers, if you're a business owner, if you're a person that is selling products or courses or whatever it is online, uh, you can definitely go to setupmyads.com and uh, check out the presentation we would love to help you guys get more customers and for those of you who want to make more money okay go to adsagencynetwork.com i'll show you how you can partner with my agency how you can go out there find businesses who need customers we train you we show you how to do it but we do all the work you'll definitely get value from that and with that said as always i'll see you on the internet take care